Did you know that more men want a bigger penis than the men who actually want to be taller? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm going to talk about increasing penile girth and what are the evidence-based ways that have been researched that are available to enhance penile girth. Now, before I get into the options, I think it's really important to discuss why men want penile enhancement. As I mentioned earlier, right, there's actually studies that show men want a longer or larger penis than they want to be taller. In fact, one study looked at 26 thousand men and they found that 45 percent expressed wanting a larger penis while only 38 percent wanted to be taller in height so some of you might be thinking that men only want augmentation because they're actually smaller than normal when you look at research of these men seeking penile augmentation the majority of them are actually within the normal size ranges so these people generally overestimate what is the normal penis size for example when they looked at a small study of men when they asked them what was normal in terms of flaccid penile length, they responded that it was about 13 centimeters. But that's actually significantly larger than the true average length, which is somewhere between 8 to 10 centimeters. And other studies have shown that up to 91% of men perceive that their penis is too short or too thin. Now, what about body dysmorphia? People talk about this a lot. And what this is is when you're so preoccupied with what you think is a defect in your body in some sort of organ or body structure that it can lead to compulsive behaviors or even obsessive thoughts about it. And when you look at this in general in men who are seeking penile augmentation, the rate is actually rather low. It's somewhere between 10 and 15%. So it's not that all of these people have a preoccupation. And while we think dysmorphia is a bad reason to pursue augmentation, these people are really severely affected. They tend to exhibit more avoidance type behaviors and safety seeking. So they'll try to avoid anywhere where they're going to have to be naked in front of others, like a locker room or even when they're having sex. And it can also cause them so much distress that they have difficulty with sexual functioning. And unfortunately, they also develop very low self-esteem. So why do men actually pursue penile girth enhancement? Well, when you look at reasons, most commonly it's because they want to improve their self-confidence. They may also want to change the way their penis looks. They may want to improve the function of their penis, meaning they want to pleasure their partner better. They may have feelings of insecurity or medical issues. And unfortunately, in these men, a lot of times they can actually kind of wrap up their self-worth within how adequate their genitals are in size. And so it's really sort of a complex person that's coming to you who wants penile augmentation. And a lot of people will comment on my videos saying, well, women can get breast implants, so why can't men get cosmetic enhancement? And when you may have asked me that a couple years ago, I might have said, I think we should really be focusing on making people feel more confident in themselves. And I still agree with that. But I think ultimately there are certainly men who you can do all the hard work, do all the therapy, and and they're still going to struggle with this. And so in those cases, I think enhancement, when there's sufficient data saying that it's safe and effective, is something that I think would be a reasonable option. Now, I know in terms of the data, the first thing you're going to ask me is, do those online pills, those gummies, do they actually work? And I'm going to tell you right away that there's no scientific data to support anything that's oral to improve the size of your penis. These things are not FDA approved and very often they contain things that are not on the label and those can sometimes be dangerous. And just to let you know, you know, this natural male enhancement industry in terms of the nutraceutical market is really, really lucrative. It's actually estimated that it's going to be almost $600 billion in industry by the year 2025. Now, what about truly studied data? So in a recent, what we call narrative review, they looked at all the literature and they found 29 studies on penile girth enhancement. They looked at about 3,500 patients, but only five studies had over 100 patients. So generally these were very small and only 10 had follow-up for more than a year. So when taken together, these were considered pretty low quality with limited evidence. So let's start with the least invasive and that's a vacuum erection device. So I've made videos about this before or you can learn about how these work, but these do temporarily increase the size of the penis because they draw blood into the erectile tissue. But in terms of creating a long lasting change in either length or girth, we haven't seen that. And generally when these studies have looked at it, the protocols they've used is about 20 minutes, three times a week. And they've shown generally no increase in size and overall low satisfaction rates. The next thing is 
these penile traction devices. And these sort of are like modeling. They're using continuous force across a tissue plane to force remodeling of the tissue. Sort of like braces, you know, when people put braces on to fix the position of their teeth. So studies have shown that using these traction devices, the initial studies looked at them using them like daily for four to six hours, and they saw some increase in length, but not really an increase in girth. So maybe good for length, but certainly not for girth. And if you want to learn more about the data on increasing length, check out my video where I talk about that. And the next sort of least invasive or minimally invasive option is penile injections. Now there's a whole bunch of different injections. In fact, I've talked about some of the dangerous ones before, and I'm going to review them again with more updated literature. So first off, you know, penile injections, the first one that's been tried is autologous fat injections. And these have been used in other cosmetic procedures for decades. Basically they do liposuction and fat harvest, typically from either the thigh or the abdomen. They then prepare the fat and then they inject it underneath the skin. So in a small study of 88 men, they injected somewhere between 40 and 68 milliliters of this fat through a small incision near the glands of the penis. And this did result in a gain of girth about 2.6 centimeters. And that did tend to last up to a year for about 60 to 80% of the original patients. However, there were complications and 2.3% of patients had complications and one of them actually required additional corrective procedures. Again, another study did this similarly and again found a similar about two centimeter gain in penile circumference. However, one patient did develop nodularity. This is sort of surprising because typically when you're using fat cells, they're called adipocytes, when you implant them into really highly vascular tissue beds, they don't tend to do as well as other areas in the body and they can result in necrosis or death of the fat and cause sort of cosmetic complications and issues like that. So another study that actually reported these complications in more detail found that there was sort of these irregular fat nodules, there was some skin deformities, some scarring, and even some of the penile skin sort of kind of migrated down to the scrotum. And in a small number of patients, they saw some changes in sensation. However, the more scary thing is that there was one man who died because of what we call a fat embolism right after the fat injection. So at this point, again, I would not recommend this as I don't think it's the best option available and can have pretty dramatic complications. So next one is silicone. Silicone was first used in the 1940s and 1960s and we started being used for penile girth enhancement in probably the 1970s. And it's used as a liquid injectable silicone. However, there are reactions of the body to silicone. So what we found in these men is they got really bad swelling, they got distortion, and they got these things called silicone granulomas. And ultimately, they also had sexual dysfunction. And this happened up to 30 years after the injection. So again, would not recommend silicone at this time because there has not been a safe way to do this. There has been a micro droplet technique where they've put like very tiny droplets of silicone monthly using really small volumes. But again, this is a very small study and hasn't been shown in large numbers to show benefit. And there was really poor follow-up. Now, what about fillers? So people get fillers all over their body, on their faces, on their lips. And so what about penile fillers? Well, the most popular I would say is hyaluronic acid. Now, in the beginning, these were studied as a single large volume treatment. So people got 20 mLs of hyaluronic acid filler, and this did show a good girth increase, which was about 7.5 centimeters to 11.3 centimeters. And overall, there was very few complications, except for people did complain of a decrease in sensation. And they they felt that overall their erection was not as firm as before because the hyaluronic acid was softer. In general, people are now doing smaller volumes of hyaluronic acid more frequently to achieve the desired girth enhancement, but to avoid sort of this decreased sensation issue. However, these hyaluronic acid fillers are not permanent, and so they can decrease in volume over time. The next type of filler that people have used is called polymethyl methacrylate. Now this is non-absorbable, and when used, they did see an increase in girth and even an increase in length. The girth was about 2.4 centimeters, and the length was a little less than a centimeter. And this is probably because this implant is stiffer, and so people are actually seeing length increase too. However, despite getting good results in terms of size, they actually saw a lot of nodules 
modularity, ridges, indentations in about half of people. And if you needed to get it removed because you didn't like the cosmetic appearance, it's actually very difficult to do. And removing it can result in deformity, erectile dysfunction, pain during intercourse, and even fibrosis of that erectile tissue. And also these studies don't have really long-term follow-up and their results have not been reproducible. What about surgeries? So surgeries have been tried and complication rates are all over the map. In studies, they've shown 8.6% complication rate to all the way up to 100%. But the most common complications are swelling, scar formation, even skin necrosis, ulcers or wound infections, and even reoperation. But what kind of surgeries are they actually doing? So in terms of surgical interventions, the most common thing people are using are grafts. So in this case, the one that's been studied looked at a graft from the groin that was included dermis as well as a subcutaneous fat. And it works by increasing the bulk and the blood vessels in that area to help the graft sort of get taken in by the tissues where it's getting placed. And in this study, they only had 11 patients where they tried this and they did see an increase in girth really of about two to 2.5 centimeters, but there was a high rate of complications with seven of the 11 patients having swelling, pain with erections, temporary curvature, and just in general pain. In another study, they took 69 men and instead of using a graft with their own tissue, they used what's called a porcelain dermal acellular graft and this is inserted through a small incision basically right at the base of the penis in the infrapubic area and they again saw an increase in girth by about two to three centimeters however 13 percent had fibrosis of the graft and this caused then penile shortening by up to half a centimeter so not a great thing the next thing which i've talked about before is called the penuma implant and while the data that's been published on this, as I discussed in that video, seemed pretty reasonable, since that date, there have been increasing reports of people actually needing revision surgery after the penuma implant. And they've actually revised the penuma, you know, in response to that to reduce the risk of complications. However, the issue with this particular surgery or a lot of cosmetic surgeries is that people tend to not go back to the surgeon who performed the cosmetic surgery. They tend to go elsewhere. So in terms of the penuma there as i mentioned have been reports of complications with the penuma requiring reconstructive surgery afterwards now what the true rate of that is unclear and the last type of surgery that's been reviewed is called corporal augmentation phalloplasty so in that they basically take vein grafts from the saphenous vein which is often used for cardiac surgery and they suture that directly onto the corporal tissue or the erectile tissue and again this is a small study they did it in about 39 patients and they did see an increase in diameter by about 1.3 centimeters, but that was only during erections and not during the flaccid state. And there was a temporary curvature in almost 40% of patients, but it did resolve within three months. This is pretty radical invasive surgery for penile girth augmentation. And overall, I would say that the studies on this are pretty lacking. And so there's been no consensus in terms of the expert guidelines on what is an accepted standardized way to to enhance penile girth. And as I mentioned earlier, these complications are very underreported, likely because these patients aren't going back to the doctors who did their procedures. And they're generally considered experimental. So if you are really considering something like this, I strongly encourage you to do your own research to really give some critical consideration to the possible risks associated with it before you go ahead in getting any sort of penile girth enhancement. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my video on the coital alignment technique. I bet you'll find that interesting as well. And if you're interested in seeing me as a patient, I'm not currently offering any girth or length enhancement procedures at this point. However, I am considering adding that to my repertoire at some point. So please let me know if that's something that you would want to see. If you want to see me for other reasons, please feel free to reach out www.renamalikmd.com backslash appointments to make an appointment very easily. Just schedule at the time and date that is most convenient for you. And as always, I'm going to take care of yourself because you are worth it.